dusting effects which I like to do and right now we're just at the chipping area and usually when I sit down uh, to paint and do chipping acrylic I tend to just sit down and forget to put the camera up because it's a lot of extra work when I can just sit down and you know have fun go right for it but uh, this time I did set up the camera a bit uh, so you can see a few few um, stages in this process but the general idea is using two colors here desaturating a base using acrylic uh, to create that worn weathered look um, kind of stylized just how I like to do it um, pretty light but also heavy <laughs> kind of a middle ground of both uh, and right now yeah we're just just acrylic on top of lacquer at this point and that's where we're at at the moment and then I'll be going over the little bits in the video as we go but just wanted to pop in and show where where all these processes get you to at this point. Uh, what I will do is use enamel dust from about here up and I'll do some soot around the uh, thrusters just to give them a little bit of a grimy, dirtier look. What I'll do is I'll, I'll gradiate and fade the uh, dust up so there's almost nothing going here. Mainly heavy around the feet and then just a light, medium, and then almost nothing else. Uh, as I go up to the top. Maybe a little bit of stain and some shading areas, but in general this is where I like to go from lacquer, decals, matte coat, and I start my acrylic, which you'll see in the video coming up. Uh, the acrylic chipping. And this will show you the results of it right there. I'll be quiet for a second just so you can see where it's at with just acrylic on top of lacquer. Hand painted. I've shown this quite a few times in the other videos, but this is generally the size I've been using for almost everything, all the chipping, and it's going to be the, I mean, I, they are a little more expensive, but I just found that I like them. As long as you keep, keep care of them, you don't have to worry about them being damaged or went away, even with using them, using lacquer. So, it's one of the main ones I like to use, but I have recently using these smaller ones they been fitting a little more comfortable in my hand so take a little quick look there I use still use the large more uh, it holds paint better but that really tiny one is nice for just very very tiny controlled uh, dotting and or eye work nice there you go even closer but yeah that's what I've been using. Just the way it fits in the hand is really nice because I can sit there and sometimes hold like that. Very carefully. I can move all the way up to here. It's very light. Tapping. Uh, so that's generally what I've been using more recently. Still work on this, but I've been using the smaller ones more recently. Feel better in my hand. Let me thin anything uh, and do my washes with these small... Uh, wooden q-tips um, I use just a mission model thinner it's a little bit of a harsher thinner and it seems to more than just water uh, seem to do an interesting kind of um, quick rub away and wash and you could probably just use water as well but I like to add this in for my cleaning so that I can have uh, I add those streaks as I go so when you see me 
uh, wiping away with the little wood handled q-tip it's I'm removing I'm letting the the acrylic dry for just that couple seconds and then I'm wiping away it lightly to kind of cause a streaking effect inside and give it like a pre-wash while I'm doing my chipping so it kind of adds another level another, another level of blending into the uh, finished the halfway finished piece just talked about uh, what the goal and plan is at this stage of it but I'm gonna tell you the materials I used right before the video start so for the green and desaturated part I use just um, the matte white from ammo or any matte white you want I just happen to have this one around and then I use green was the uh, in, uh, there we go cockpit emerald green it was pretty close to start out with with the green I use because I use lacquer um, to base start all these so I don't like to use lacquer for the chipping because it's unforgiving so I like to use acrylic because I can remove it as I go and I can always take it back so I try to find a color that is close as possible and then I desaturate it in this case I try to keep it as even as possible so one part white one part of the base color that was as close as possible and then you'll see this next part um, this is the colors I use for that and you'll see me applying it uh, where I could some of the video wasn't good uh, so I removed it but there's a bit in there you can see at least me applying the white first or the desaturated base all right here's that
so the uh, you already saw the light desaturated base going in and now for the darker chipping tones what I like to use is only use this brown it's just for some reason always I, I got a bunch of bottles of it a while back so this is just what I've been using forever and plan on using forever but it's just a dark brown any kind of a dark brown light brown find your not not light brown sorry a dark to medium brown and then I have matte black right here so what I'll do is I always find just the brown on its own in most cases um, to be a little too light so I like to go one part of the brown and then one part black to just uh, darken it up on you know surfaces to really make it pop and add more depth uh, but you can do it without I just have found my way of doing it is with these two parts so you can see that in the next video is me applying the dark tone to inside of these chips
about is enamel. It's going to be the Mr. Weather. Uh, going to be a white dust and or the Sunday wash. And then for the thrusters, I'll use just the multi-black. Uh, I thin this with just a little bit of alcohol and I spray it through my airbrush, uh, very diluted. And I layer it slowly. You want to go very slow with it. Uh, but that's pretty much it. What I, when I was talking about putting on the dust is I use enamels at the very, you end up with a part that's pretty much good to go. I mean, you could just put this out, uh, give it a nice matte coat and I'd call it done. But I like to just add that little extra like the dust raising up from a suit that's always walking through anywhere. You just hear pounding down so much weight that it's just poof, 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 poof. And it adds kind of a nice uh, uh, blend through. Now I can show you in a second. Let me go grab the uh, Guyane so you can see what I've already finished with the uh, dust. Now you can see here, it's just, it's very subtle, especially on this camera, but you see the shade shifting between here, darker to a little bit lighter. You can just see a very subtle shade shift between there and there. It's, very, it's almost nothing. In person, you see it better in person, but it's just a little bit of a shift from tone here, ending here. That's all I want. That'll be the end result there. So you can kind of see, when I turn the angle there, you see the little bit darker, kind of dustier stain at the bottom going up. And then I'll do another final matte coat over the top, and then it'll be done. So, yeah like this method uh, you can throw this together pretty quick I can once it's uh, once it once it has its matte coat once the decals are down uh, once it's just been sitting there in parts I can sit there with two components once I found the colors the uh, colors of acrylic uh, I can sit down and just the whole kit can be done out in you know a couple hours uh, as far as chipping it, it's 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 a with time and practice parts of it can be as good looking as actual manual physical chipping of the paint away and I think this can just be a really quick method uh, for practice and it's a lot more forgiving because you're working over lacquer and therefore while you're working it's like you mess up a spot real bad you just clean it off get your thinner out and just wipe it away start over don't worry about it and so I think with me you don't have to worry about that stress of oh god what am I gonna do how am I gonna do? you're already doing it you're 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 in the middle of working on it go ahead try it i'll always start somewhere unique as a base so you'll see the shield is probably better than the other stuff because i i sat there and more focused that part out and that's where i started so i start there or i'll start somewhere you know in the back or down here so that i can kind of shake the cobwebs off or try to figure out my pattern and once i've figured out the pattern like maybe i'll work on an angle and go okay so this is how the weathering is going to look on this kit and then once I figured that out, it's pretty much just smooth sailing for there. It's just getting over the idea of what if I fail? We'll use acrylic, so even if you fail, you just wipe it off. I mean, now that really works when you have, you can have that over acrylic based paint that you've painted, but make sure you seal it with like with a lacquer a clear coat and a lacquer uh, matte coat, because then that will help you be able to remove and without removing your base paint below. But that's generally how I like to do it. I like working in lacquers because of that stability and that I can weather with acrylic. Uh, at this stage too, if I really wanted to, I could remove all of this in a couple hours with uh, thinners and safe, safely cleaning it off if I really just hated it the next morning. So that's why I like it. Ends up, uh, I don't ever really do that because you, know, you always find something regardless. I mean, you made it, you gotta like it. All right, see you next time.